This is Charles McIntosh and he comes from Glasgow in Scotland. He was born more than 250 years ago, way back in 1766. He came up with a great idea that's made his name famous and part of the English language forever. Want to know what it was? Here's his story. Charles was always interested in science and chemistry, even when he was a small boy. He really enjoyed experimenting in his father's workshop and in bad weather, there he'd be, busy making potions and lotions in test tubes and trying out the occasional explosion. He was probably fascinated by science because his father George was too. George had a successful business, dyeing cloth, and he'd even found out a clever way to make a new dye using people's wee. Now, to understand Charles's story properly, you've got to know where rubber comes from. Or maybe you already know. In that case, well done you. It comes from the rubber trees in hot countries like Malaysia and Indonesia. When you make a cut in the trunk of the rubber tree, a white fluid called latex drips out of the tree and you can collect it in buckets. This latex is then turned into rubber. You might have a rubber at the end of your pencil. It's pretty hard and to make it stretchy and spreadable, you have to add something to the rubber. But what? Back in Charles's day, no one was quite sure. Well, you already know Charles liked experimenting and he wanted to find a way to make rubber spreadable. Back then, they didn't have electricity for lighting. All the light came from gas, like this street light here. And that gas came from burning lots of coal. And here's the important bit in our story. When you burn coal and turn it into gas, you get a liquid known as naphtha. Naphtha, when you add it to rubber, makes it very soft like butter. Charles already knew that water can't get through rubber and that set him thinking. Charles poured naphtha onto some hard rubber, let it soften and then he spread it on a piece of fabric. Then he sandwiched another piece of fabric on top. He tried dripping water on this new rubber sandwich material and sure enough he found no water got through it. He'd found a way of waterproofing fabric. So, what was he going to do with it? Looking out of the window, it's obvious. Make a coat that stops you getting wet. He was very excited. He took his coat to a tailor who made clothes and showed it to him. But he just held his nose and made a horrible face. Yuck! It stinks. It stinks of nasty chemicals. What's more, it leaks. Rubbish idea. No one is ever going to want to wear that. It'll never work. If you really believe in something, you don't give up that easily, right? Charles persuaded some cotton makers, the Burley brothers in Manchester, to build a factory next to their cotton mill so he could make his rubber sandwich material. They were soon joined by Mr Hancock, who was a whiz at rubber making. He managed to get rid of the nasty smell and to stop the leaks. The business started to grow. Big machines mashed up the rubber and made it finer and smoother. And soon the Macintosh waterproof coats were getting better and better. It wasn't long before the army and the navy were ordering coats for soldiers and sailors. Charles Macintosh may have died in 1843, but his name certainly lives on and his clever idea has not been forgotten because as soon as it starts raining, everyone needs a Mac, don't they?